Welcome to a brand new series, it's called In My Steam Engine Playroom, part one. This is my second workshop and it is where I have a modest collection of model steam engines. This episode features a Hornby G100 Stevenson's rocket and a larger 5 inch gauge OS Stevenson's rocket. First up is the Hornby rocket sat on the workbench. These Hornby rockets are 3.5 inch gauge but they're not to be confused with 3.5 inch gauge coal fired steam engines that pull passengers. These Hornby Stevenson's rockets seem to have one particularly bad design fault. Because of the physical size of the cylinders, the drive to the wheels are actually geared. The crank web is not attached to the wheel, so it rotates faster than the wheel itself. That is not the design fault I'm talking about. I bought one of these when they first came out and initially I enjoyed running it on a long piece of track around my garden. And it ran sort of okay, not a lot of power, but it went around the track. The problem is if the boiler boils dry, which it does because the boiler inside the part that's painted yellow is very small, and in my opinion it's really bad. The connecting rods and eccentric rods connect to the piston rod and the valve rod using plastic clips. And if the boiler runs dry, the engine overheats, the plastic clips melt, and the rods fall off. When this happened to me shortly after I bought it in about 1979, I phoned Hornby to complain and they sent me a replacement. This, by the way, is not the replacement. I bought this many years later. I sold the original one to a friend of mine. And I got a good price for it because basically I didn't run it. What I'm doing here is removing the safety valve. And in its place I'm going to fit this compressed air connector. I made this in a series called Model Engineering for Beginners. It was a bit of a rush job so it's not perfect but it will do the job I want it to do. In this clip I've connected the piece of silicone rubber tubing and the other end is connected to the pressure regulator on my compressor. As soon as I turn on the air, and it's very low pressure air, but as soon as I take the weight off the wheels, they spin very freely. You have to be very careful with these models. They are not very strong, and it's very easy to snap the connecting rods when turning the wheels into the reverse direction. This engine uses what is known as slip eccentric valve gear, and as you can't shut the steam off, when you push it in reverse, you can actually damage it. You have to be very gentle with these things. This clip shows the underside view, and you can see the gearing. Personally, I've only ever seen this system on these Hornby Stevenson's rockets. I turned off the air supply and rotated both of the wheels in a reverse direction, but once I stopped the air supply and started it again, it went forward. From underneath you can see the plastic clip which secures the connecting rod to the piston rod, and also in this view you can clearly see the plastic clip that secures the eccentric rod to the valve rod. Obviously cheap to manufacture, but in practice I found this to be a big fail. The slip eccentric valve gear has only been erratic because the engine is laid on its side and doesn't have a load on the wheels. When it's on the track, it's a different story. It generally behaves itself and doesn't randomly change between forward and reverse. This, in my opinion, is another design fault. It's a massive gas tap and I don't know what the thinking was in using a gas tap this size. Some parts of this Stevenson's rocket are quite scale, but not the gas tap. The tender is very nicely made and painted and it has a dummy water barrel and when you lift this off underneath that is the gas tank. It is a plastic gas tank and over time these do tend to leak. You can buy replacement gas tanks made from metal from a company called Forest Classics. I'm not going to run this engine on steam, it just lives on my mantelpiece in the kitchen. And to be honest it makes a great ornament. From a practical point of view though I was a bit underwhelmed with the one I bought many years ago. There's another version of this model that you see now and again called a G125 and that is a dummy and that doesn't have a gas tap on the dummy boiler backhead and also I don't think it has pistons either. The G125 is just a display model. Now for something completely and utterly different. Yes I am aware that it's yet another model of a Stevenson's rocket but there the similarity ends. This one used to be made by a Japanese company called OS and it's absolutely beautiful. And believe it or not, this engine can pull at least one passenger around a track. It's 5 inch gauge. In order for it to do that, it needs some ballast on the front. 
in the form of a cast iron weight. Here's a close up of the valve gear. These rods and linkages are supposed to simulate the GAB valve gear which was fitted to the full size Stevenson's rocket. The only complaint I've got about this model is the use of Allen cap head bolts, but I'm not going to alter that because this is how it was built originally by OS many years ago. Here's a steam whistle. It's very small and a bit on the high pitch side. This engine has a proper regulator to control the volume of steam, or in this case air, going to the cylinders. This clip shows both of the engines close together to compare the size. There is a big difference between these two models, the first one being the price, and also the quality. It would be unfair to do a comparison between the two, as the small one is a toy, and the large one is still a toy, but it's a big boy's toy. This particular example of a 5-inch OS rocket has not been steamed, and I won't be steaming it. If I decide to devalue it radically, then yes, I would steam it. But after this compressed air run, I'm going to put it back in its glass case in my kitchen. Unlike the Hornby rocket's slip eccentric reversing, this is a lot better. That click that you just heard were the eccentrics locking into the forward position. And you actually press a lever on the foot plate to release the eccentrics, so you can operate the slip eccentric reversing just by moving the engine in reverse on the track. If you don't move the lever on the foot plate, no amount of pushing it in reverse on the track will make it go backwards. Quite unlike the Hornby rocket, but these are very, very different things. And for the idiot who keeps writing in and leaving nasty comments saying, oh, it's all right for you, you get everything for free, that is not true. Occasionally, a few regular viewers will send me a gift voucher to Blackgate's Engineering, which usually buys me some nuts and bolts. Everything else on the channel, I pay for, using my own money and usually paying full retail price. One viewer from the USA has sent me quite a lot of bits and pieces, but that in fact is payment, including shipping, for a major job that I'm doing for him. So to the person who kept writing in, whose name is Andrew, please don't send me any more stupid messages. They don't just go on the channel, you know. I get to see them first and I decide whether to let them through and yours just went in the scrap bin. Here's a bit of slow motion. This isn't slow motion. The engine is actually running at this speed on very little compressed air. You may be wondering why I don't have the wheels on the rolling road at the front. When I do that, the engine does rock slightly from side to side. And when I check the full size, that also rocks from side to side, which is possibly why, on a later revision of the rocket, the one in the Science Museum, the cylinder positions had been lowered to a position very much like you see on most steam locomotives. And that is it for the first episode of In My Steam Engine Playroom. Stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.